back here with Greenland on turn one. If you saw the introduction video, then you probably saw the event, but in case not, we'll just show it here. It had actually no negative effects and instead granted this benefit that all southern biome hunt rolls add a baby uh, and an energy token, which is great for the southern biome because it has literally no energy offerings down here except for the new world. Lots of other interesting choices, but not energy. Whereas the northern side of Greenland has lots of energy opportunities and even some ivory. Uh, including this narwhal here, but not without their own, uh, you know, issues or dangers. The walrus, you know, the polar bear, obviously dangerous targets. So is the narwhal. The narwhal actually is a pretty prized, uh, prized, uh, you know, animal to hunt, I guess, because it provides so, the, the drawbacks are few and the benefits are great for grabbing it. It is a very low value, so it is very possible that a migration would target it for, would, you know, basically cause it to move. Okay. The event card says here that the Norse player gets to go first. They could choose to have someone else go first because they do have a war chief right now. But because it's so early in the game and because also the nice benefit of hunting the southern biome, which is the native uh, Norse homeland, uh, grants this turn. Because if you, have to, if you remember from the introduction, uh, they say the Tunit and the Tool, their homeland is in northern Greenland and they require either a mariner or a sled to visit cards in the southern biome, right? So the Norse could wait and try to see what they're going to do, but honestly, it's such a good opportunity to jump first because everybody's tied right now, so forces are limited, and it's a good opportunity with some of the cards down here to go strike and try to grab something good. And immediately, the Norse player is attracted to two different cards. Essentially, the Norwegian L count here. It's easy to get success on, right? We'd automatically, if we brought our alpha, get a success, which is a baby. But and it also would become a domesticatable card. We could take it into our hand because we do have not only a plus one hand size for our blacksmith, but also our daughter, Brigida. She gives us a plus two hand size due to her literacy. If we were able to roll doubles as those two blank icons in that hand uh, uh, icon show, if we were able to do that, then we could take it into our hand, and then on a later turn, or later in the same turn, we could spend an energy to domesticate if we still have our shaman, which we will. The shaman could then take that, domesticate the Norwegian elk count, and we would get access, if you see at the bottom of that card, I'll just flip it because it's easier to read, right? If that was on our tableau, we would be able to get access to rerolling threes on land hunts, and we'd have access to a sled, which is actually a pretty nice ability, but, the Norwegian Elk Hound might be superseded by the Baron Ground Caribou here. Because if we get two successes, which is a little more difficult, then we get the two babies. If we roll triples, we can take it in our hand. And if we have it in our tableau, I won't flip it, but you can see there it gives you a baby every turn and gives you a sled access as well for no cost. So it's really a question of what do we want to have sled access, which both get, we want that. But do we want to receive an unassigned hunter every turn, or do we want to get the access to re-roll threes? And, uh... There's not a lot of, well, there actually is quite a few land hunting biomes here. We have the caribou, the seal pup, the ox, the polar bear. There are a couple of definitely land things. Oh, wait, no, that's not it. So that could almost be worth it. <clears throat> the other item that could be worth it here in the southern biome would be the cold forging process, which allows, it's pretty easy to grab. It's an invention, so you'll have to have your blacksmith or whatever they have, the tool makers. Here it's the sage, here it's the artisan, and we could spend mostly for the other two, for the Norse and the tool, you have to spend iron to have inventions placed into your, your personal tableau. But if you are the tunit, then you can use either ivory or iron, which is a nice little ability for them. So this is something to think about grabbing too, but honestly, we want to kind of get a little more established, although that is a nice little ability to re-roll, or basically get fours on metallurgical rolls to become ones, and it's worth three trophy points. That's nothing, it's not too shabby. That's a pretty nice thing to grab. But I think right now the idea of grabbing a sled ability and then we can travel pretty much freely to any card in the north with as many people as we want. We're not limited to the Mariner's uh, forward limit. And one thing I should mention, I did not mention this in the introduction. Some elders you can have multiples of. And you see here, like, if they have dots here under the Mariner and Tracker, that means you can get more than one, right? You can only have one War Chief, but you can have multiple Trackers, multiple Mariners. You can also have, I believe, multiple blacksmiths, shamans, and that's it. And 
there are times you might want that, especially if you have no access to like literacy or anything, like especially if we discussed with Tunit having no literacy abilities themselves, they might want to have more than one artisan if they can't secure a uh, bride that's literate or has literacy abilities. It's something to think about if you are in that kind of case, like you want to have more elders there. But then that means you have less hunters, which means you can do less things, which means you have less ability to guard. So it's kind of a trade-off, right? Same thing goes with having mariners. You can get more mariners that allows you to move more groups of people around. But the sled allows you to go to any sort of biome, right, in Greenland. Not necessarily a new world, you need a mariner for that. But it's something the red player is going to think about. So I think the red player is going to take all their cubes. There are lots of options they could do here, but they want to kind of group it together because they don't want to split their forces lest the tool or the tunit use their mariner to bring four units down and perhaps challenge them and eliminate precious red cubes right now. Um, so they're going to take all their guys, and then you're going to go to the Caribou. It's riskier. It's going to be tougher to roll triples for sure, as opposed to doubles to domesticate, or to take into our hand and possible domestication. But I think this benefit's worth a little more than re-rolling the threes, although that actually has pretty good ability. But I think the guaranteed hunter every turn is going to be very nice, especially with our settlement goat. It's going to give us the ability to recover if we have to very quickly from devastations. Uh, and also just be able to amass more hunters so that we can more aggressively raid northern biomes or even colonize uh, Vinland there. So the red player is going to go there and then choose to put all their forces there to concentrate and not be susceptible to counterattacks. Okay. Who's next? Yellow. So there's lots of stuff in the northern biome. So we already know they get a bonus going to southern biome, and that makes it very attractive for several reasons, right, as we discussed. The northern biome, though, holds pretty good stuff as well. This narwhal in particular is a really nice card. If you get two successes, it only kills you on threes. That's not too bad. Um, but if you get two successes, which our alpha would give us one automatically, you can get three babies and two wood and two ivory. That's pretty good. Seal there, easy to hunt, right? Gives you a baby and an energy. That's really nice. An invention here that would let us reroll th or turn threes into ones from uh, fishing biomes. That's actually really handy. But how many fishing biomes are there? There's the shark. Difficult, but that would be easier with that. Worth five trophy points. Pretty nice. The narwhal itself is a fishing. That would actually help out. It would make the narwhal um, harmless. Because it would take, what is it, all threes would become ones. So the narwhal would no longer harm us. Um, and that's it. Also in the bird cliff. Oh, uh, yeah, the uh, biome bird cliffs or whatever. So some things to think about here. And honestly... Ooh, the walrus is pretty good, too. Look at that. Gives you four, two, and two. I think maybe we'll have to go for that. Originally, I was thinking, oh, I'll go for the narwhal. And we should also, I'm, I should take a break and think about some of our abilities, right? Because we do have special abilities for each race. So we didn't really think about the Norse. They don't have too many. They get to reroll four metallurgicals. That's pretty nice on metallurgical, which is, the new world it does count as that, okay? And so do most um, inventions or things like that, the forging. That's nice. Let's see who we're, we are the yellow. They can reroll maritime fishing, so that's actually really nice. That means the walrus or the narwhal are going to be good targets for us to go after. And the walrus, honestly, is looking like the top dog. So yellow is going to take all their guys and go there. Again, I could split my forces, but I don't want green to take advantage of that. And even though that would involve them splitting their forces and maybe attacking, it's just too risky for maybe trying to go for that. Uh, nice technology there, even though I might let green have it now for free. Because now green gets to go last. And going last has some good advantage in this game. Again, green has their northern habitat up here. So they have some options. They could also raid the south because they do have a mariner. So they could bring some guys down and grab some things down here if they thought there was anything worth grabbing. But honestly, the, now that the narwhal is open, let's take a look at their special abilities, though. They get to reroll fishing rolls, a reroll of three. They also get two, yeah, a reroll of four. So threes and fours on fishing. So that makes them pretty good to go after, like maybe, ooh, the ring seal is too easy. Shark is not really worth it. Bird cliffs aren't really worth it either. Ooh, this is a tough decision. They want to get some energy, if at all possible, in Ivory, so I think they're going to go for the Narwhal. wall. These, these two are just too good to pass up. They only kill on a, a three roll, you only need two successes, and they really do give you quite the bounty there, and there's a possibility you can get triples and get them a trophy. Same thing there. So Green Player is also going to do it. They're going to take all theirs. They're going to not only do the Narwhal attack, but they're also going to roll in their um, colony here in Markland and try to get some additional energy that's going to try to put them on top. 
Okay, so no conflicts this round because everybody chose um, separate biomes. There's no interference. So that's kind of interesting, but the beginning of the game is going to be that way because you kind of want to build up and, and get started, and then later it'll be advantageous to strike. So here we go. We're going to take the red here. We have the Baron Ground Caribou. Because we have the Alpha, it automatically becomes a 1, right? His, his role is automatically. We're going to choose that. You can choose not to have the automatic success and then roll a die, and that's important for getting triples or more, but I think I'm just going to take the success because it's too important. I don't want to fail early on. So we have what here? Uh, five cubes. So we're going to roll. So automatically we already have two successes. That's nice. Two fives, a four. So we don't have anything that's a triples, right? We need triples to pick that up. But we did succeed, and it doesn't. nothing kills you or hurts you. Oop. Come back here, guy. So we have succeeded in that hunt. We will take two guys out of here. Okay. And we'll just place them over here right now, right? So they gained that. That was very successful. Good job, red team. Didn't get the triples, though. Kind of been nice. That actually was kind of the goal, right? It was to domesticate that. So we could have actually gotten doubles if we had gone there, and that would have been kind of nice. But we went for triples there. Maybe got a little too greedy. Yellow player here on the Walrus. Again, same situation. The Alpha is going to give him an auto success. It's on the warm side. He gets a one hit. So now they roll five dice and we're looking for successes, but we get killed on three rolls. But as yellow, we should also remember that we can re-roll. What is that? Fours, threes. Yeah, just fours and threes. So here we go. Five dice. So that's nice. We automatically succeed. We got those two, right? But then we also got three fours, which we could re-roll if we wanted to, but we don't need to because we got the success. That's very interesting because, of course, we now have triples and we could take this card into our hand for three points. If we do so, we're going to reduce the amount of total cards available in the northern Greenland biome. But, you know, that's actually a pretty good result, and I think we're going to do that. I think Yellow's going to get greedy and maybe strike first and take these points and the, the sweet benefits they get with it as well. So we're going to take this card. <clears throat> I'm going to put it down here. I'm going to actually move their stuff. We have to make more room here. And immediately we get the benefit of four babies, two energy, two ivory, which is a great, I mean, that's a huge hunt. I might have wanted, you know, it's, it's very possible you want to keep those kind of things around because they're so good, but then you get the opponent's ability to access them as well, right? So this might be just a good idea to take it off the board now while we can for triples. We got the ex we got the nice uh, benefit of it, so I think maybe it's worth it right now. Put some pressure on other players to grab other things, which maybe is going to hurt us in the long run, right? Because it's like an, almost like an arms race. If you start taking too many of the biomes and getting too much good stuff, then other people are pressured to do the same, and then you reduce the total amount of land you can actually access, right? So two ivory though is huge. That's going to give us some nice ability to bargain and also because we are the uh, was it the tool and don't we win ties yeah but purely lets us win ties so that's actually very nice that's very nice indeed um, I grab one two did I do two no that's two all right I got the four extra cubes two energy two ivory so really good oh one thing I should have mentioned is that you can actually only store up to eight energy so right now everybody starts with five did he have more than eight one two so he's one away. Oh yeah, and there's also the mark one. Do we ever do that? Oh no, that's coming up. We're gonna do that soon. Okay, I thought maybe I missed that. So yellow also very very successful on their roll. Now we go to old green, the last, the tunit, and we'll go ahead and do the um, Markland roll because it's just uh, pretty easy. I'll go ahead and make these guys down. So you see, we need one success. Uh, threes and sixes kill us, and if we win, we get one colonist and four energy, which would um, top us off on energy. So let's go ahead and roll five dice. Uh, wouldn't you know it, not a single success. Three, four, four, five, and five. What kills us? Threes and sixes. So just one death. That's not terrible, but we didn't get the benefit, so boom. I should also mention in the phase when you assign hunters, you can use your mariner's ability to take four cubes off of Markland and move them anywhere else, right? They can become unassigned or go to other places. Um, I think they can go other places. 
I'm going to look that up later. I'm not going to look it up on camera, but I've, if I mess up those kind of rules, sorry, it's just sort of in my head. But I do know that they can actually move guys then, so it's not permanent that you keep guys there. They just don't leave at the end of the turn, right? They're always going to stay there. Whereas these guys at the end of the hunt will always go back to their original uh, unassigned tableau. So that was unfortunate. We kind of lost that out. It's kind of green special abilities to kind of get really easy access to energy early on. So now we're going to fight the Narwhal. And we have the same kind of situation again, odd of success due to the alpha. We have five dice. Oh, very easily right here. So three ones, a three, and a four. We can reroll. Wait, is it a... No, it's not. So it's a hunting. So if it was a fishing one, we could reroll fours thanks to Mika. No one else helps us out. And our special ability, the Shaman, gives us a reroll with a three. But it wasn't a fishing one. It was a um, maritime hunting. So let's see what they got kills on. Kills on threes. They had one three there. Okay. So one death. That's not terrible. It's pretty good, actually. Because we're actually going to get three guys back. So we'll take that one guy immediately right back and get two more. Green doesn't have a lot of extra in, the, in what they call Valhalla, which is sort of the resting place for your dead cubes here. This is my nice uh, Nancy's yogurt, uh, whole milk yogurt. That's what I use for all my chip pulls and stuff. Anyway, this is Valhalla for this game. And you can see because of the colonist situation for the, the uh, tunit, they actually have less guys overall to recruit. So it's something you have to think about. But anyway, we got our three there, right? We also get two energy and two ivory. So you're thinking, oh, this has gone really swimmingly. Every tribe has just gone off and gotten really good, pretty much good results. They've been able to replenish their energy here, if almost top it off. They've been able to get additional people. Nothing bad has happened. Oh, we forgot to add the special um, thing because of this card, right? So only the Norse got it, and they definitely successfully hunted. So they get one more energy and one more red guy. Forgot about that. Oh, they didn't succeed. No, they didn't. That's right. That's right. They didn't succeed. Or did they? No, they did. Right? They did succeed. It's only worth two. I forgot. They just didn't get the triples. That's the thing they missed. God. Okay, I'm being silly. Being silly. So they get one more and they get more energy because of this nice uh, plankton bloom. That's kind of big because you really need to keep track of energy. Energy becomes very precious, um, as we'll see when we get some nasty events. Okay, so the Narwhal, do we get anything else? We also got triples, we got three ones. So we could to also take the Narwhal into our hands and uh, wow, I've, I'm more hesitant to do that because green or yellow struck first. And I don't really want our biome to get so reduced even though I do have access to Markland and I can pretty much defend it or hold it and get benefits of that for energy. I don't know, I'm tempted, but that would almost leave us with one, two, three, Four cards? Ugh, that's not very good at all. <sighs> but yellow gets the advantages for hunting that, so green might want to take that because they can just easily start doing rerolls, and that's not so easily for uh, the green player to do that. So, hmm. This might be a mistake as well, but I'm going to do that. I'm going to take it as a trophy. So they're going to come down. I'm getting aggressive. I'm depleting our environment in the first turn. Okay, so he's there. He gives us nice three trophy points. Okay. Now we move on. So we just did all of our roll for hunts. We're going to pay for our hay costs for any domesticated animals, which at the time includes only the settlement goat. We don't have any in our hand, right? We tried to get this guy and put him in our hand so we could domesticate him. And you'd actually do that after this phase. So even if you get a card to domesticate, you won't receive the benefits for another turn. So we look here and we see he has no costs. It says nothing, but we get one free guy for him being there because we get nice goat's milk and people are happy with goat's milk and fertile and babies get bigger and they drink more goat's milk and we have more goats and it's an endless cycle of goats and milk. So we do that. No one else has any other animals right now. Just trophies. Just nice big fat tusks and narwhal tusky things on the wall. And uh, yeah, so just some nice trophies over here. I believe every t every turn is a generation, so this is what, 20 to 30 years I think have gone by, so yay, we've, we've done it. Uh, we're at the final phase, Elder Action phase. This is when you can domesticate cards, take them out of their hand, or place tool cards, the tool making, if the shamans you have are alive to do that, right? We also can witch burn or banish, we don't want to do any of that for anybody. Everybody's pretty happy with what they have. 
Okay, so that is the end of turn one of Greenland. So let's take a look. That was an easy one. That was not a hard card. And no one bid on it, so it's going to be very interesting to see what happens on the next round. And when we come back, round two of Greenland.